Thank you all um, for being here today. So as Jane mentioned, I will give you an uh, introduction into the understanding packaging scorecard or in short UP or UP scorecard. That's a new tool uh, that should help to reduce environmental and human health impacts of foodware and food packaging items. Well, if you haven't already seen the tool or used it, um, I have here a screenshot of the actual scorecard or the result page of the tool. Just you have a picture in mind when we talk afterwards a little bit more about the tool. So what you can see is um, different kinds of generic container types. Um, this is a beverage container um, use case and you have six metrics and an overall metric um, you can see. I will talk about this a little bit more, but just that you know how it looks like. And very important, uh, currently it's in a beta stage, so it's a beta version. Um, so we are glad uh, to have it online and we are also very happy to get user feedback. With that, I would like uh, to start saying, I'm staying here at the moment, presenting you the UP or UP scorecard, but actually there are a lot of other people behind this scorecard doing the actual work or supporting the scorecard itself. So um, that's really important. I think also the strength of this um, scorecard, it's a multi-stakeholder approach, meaning there are a lot of different NGOs, industry and technical experts included. And the group behind this UP scorecard is the so-called single use material decelerator group or in short, SAMD. So this SAMD group is the project leader of this UP scorecard. FPF, where I work uh, for, is the host organization and also part of the SAMD group. We have a um, very generous foundation um, from uh, the Primat, from the Fondation Primat. Really, thank you for that. And the entire idea of scorecard started with the lexicon that uh, originally initiated the project. So just to show you a little bit the diversity of this SAMD group, there are some of the group members. Um, you can see it's really diverse with a lot of different stakeholders, interest groups involved. With that, I would like to come uh, to the start, meaning what's actually the idea behind the scorecard or why the UP scorecard? So as you all may know, it's really a challenge to do the so-called right choice when you look for sustainable foodware and food packaging products. At the same time, especially for food service industry uh, people, um, they have a huge purchasing power and they could provide a transformative market signal, uh, meaning when it comes to uh, buying more sustainable foodware and food packaging products. But often these buyers, um, they lack technical, technical expertise or time or both of it to really check all the different um, products on the market or also to get through all these different product claims or labels that say, well, it's zero emission, it's biodegradable and so on. The UP scorecard, takes that as an opportunity and it likes or tries to strengthen the potential of such sustainable minded buyers. And now how does the UP scorecard uh, does this? So the UP scorecard evaluates foodware, food packaging products as said, and it does it in a consistent and comprehensive way. And it's not only about environmental impacts, it's also about health impacts. It also does it in an easy way. So you have this scoring uh, of the different metrics and the final score, and um, it helps to make an informed decision. So it does not only say this is right, this is wrong. It also shows the constraints you have when you have to choose one or another product. And third or last but not least, um, it helps you to see what would be the most sustainable and healthy choice for the use case you have. How does the UP scorecard does, 
support uh, does how does it support this so as said in the beginning there are six metrics included in the app scorecard you see the um the six icons here on the left hand side you have three quantitative metrics they mostly life cycle assessment based um climate impact most of other tools also use climate impact water use so how much water is used during the entire life cycle of the product and the plastic pollution so that focuses on the leakage of plastic on the other hand you have on the right hand side you have three metrics that are more qualitative metrics so they have scales um, and not real numbers like uh, co2 equivalents and these three metrics are chemicals of concern that's uh, saying something about the possible presence of chemicals of concern in the product the recoverability so how good is the product recoverable um, and is there actually the option in the region to recover the product and then we also have the sustainable sourcing so um, how big is the percentage of post-consumer recycled content in the product so since we are at the food packaging forum workshop today i would like to highlight a little bit the chemicals of concern metric in the next few slides the idea behind this metric is actually to bring this topic uh, top of mind to have it included because often it's not included so far um, and also to to show the, the the challenges and the problems um that can raise with the chemicals of concern so that you also when you have to buy big amounts of um food packaging foodware that you also have an information about is is it likely that there are chemicals of concern included or which chemicals of concern will be included so chemicals of concern uh, what is it um, very briefly, um, these are chemical substances with hazardous properties, and namely, it's one or um, many of these hazardous properties you see here on the right hand side. This goes from carcinogenic, mutagenic, toxic to reproduction to persistent, mobile, and toxic. The score uh, in the UP scorecard is uh, the overall score, uh, chemicals of concern, is made uh, as a product of two factors. One factor is the chemical of concern pre uh, presence score that says something about if chemicals of concern are present or likely present in a product. And it's important, it's focusing on the intentionally added chemicals because the unintentionally ones we don't really know if they're included or not. So it's intentionally added chemicals, but it does not only say if they're present or not, it only also say, or it also measures or um, say something about the reliability of this information. Of course, it's different when you say uh, they are not included um, versus a third party says or um, actually measure if they're included or not. This first part of the chemical of concern score is based on a tiered list uh, for food contact chemicals. Um, this is the food contact chemicals of concern list you will see on the next slide. The second um, factor of the overall chemical of concern metric is the inertness core. This says something about the inertness of a food contact material. And the idea behind it is that when a product or a material is inert, it's less likely that chemicals of concern migrate um, into the food or into the environment, for example. This um, inertness score is based on expert judgment. And for all the materials where there is no consensus, actually the most materials at the moment in the up scorecard, they get always the lowest score. As mentioned, um, I give you some more information uh, on this food contact chemicals of concern list. That's a list with known chemicals of concern um, that are present or can be present in food packaging. And 
for the OPS scorecard, it's prioritized uh, in, group, uh, in groups, so in three groups, it's a tiered list in the end. So we have tier one list, um, that's a short list of priority chemicals of concern to avoid. If they are avoided in a product, that's already good. So they already, these products already get a benefit, but it's even better when chemicals of concerns in tier two or three um, are excluded. These are then more extensive sets of chemicals of concern that also should or must be avoided. The list itself, so the food contact chemicals of concern list is based on research done by NGOs um, and others, uh, industry associations. And it also includes the food contact, food contact chemical database from Food Packaging Forum. Uh, you have heard about this uh, on Wednesday when you have uh, joined the presentations already. Of course, as I said, the um, our scorecard at the moment, it's in a beta stage. So that means also there are a lot of challenges and exclusions. I would like to highlight the most important ones here. So main challenges, um, on the one hand, as always, limited availability of data, especially for the chemical of concern metric. So um, yeah, there uh, have to be ways to, pro to try to include this uncertainty. Um, then it's always a balance between the actual product and material uh, availability and meaningful results. And that's why, for example, the UP scorecard is focusing on, on generic products and you don't find actual reproducts uh, in it because uh, otherwise we wouldn't have the data. So we have these generic products that represent the different um, real products that are uh, available. And then also, um, it's always a challenge a tool uh, to design a tool that is as self-explanatory as possible, meaning the audience or the users, um, they are people, they have some knowledge, no knowledge, but a lot of interest, but probably also a lot of knowledge in the topic already. And somehow um, the, the SAMD group has to find a way or had to find a way to uh, present the results as simple as possible. Um, there are also some exclusions. Um, so actual and detailed use of container is not included. Um, so uh, you can't uh, say you use it for spaghetti or for tortellini or whatever. So it's really just a container. Um, financial implications are not included. So there is no um, economic dimension at the moment. That's the missing part of the sustainability assessment at the moment. And um, uh, uncertainties are also not included um, so far because they would make it even harder to understand on the one hand and sometimes it's also just near impossible to um, to measure the uncertainties. So when we look into the future, what's the outlook with the OPS core card? Of course, there will be further developments and maintenance of the current work, uh, current beta version that it's out at the moment. But we also plan further upgrades uh, with new functionalities and we at the moment planning this or discuss them. I would like to um, shortly briefly highlight three of them. One is regionalization. Um, at the moment, there are only US data included and we would like to expand to other regions, uh, for example, Europe could also be uh, entire regions or cities also a little bit depending on the data availability. Then, of course, we would like to add new products and container types to the one already existing. And um, there is also the idea to connect the tool to other tools or other databases like Chemsex Marketplace, for example. And of course, there are also a lot of other ideas, um, for example, having new metrics, economic ones, um, other languages, um, further information, and so on. And of course, we are also always, uh, always interested in user feedback or needs from the user. So let us know if you have any ideas or um, feedback. With that, I would like to come to the end of my presentation. Um, and I would like to highlight that there will be a new tool version released this month, so in October, that will include some edits and bug fixes. And it will also include new container types, actually the great out ones um, at the moment in the tool. 
If you would like to um, use the tool, go to upscorecard.org. And if you have any questions, let us know on info at upscorecard.org. Thank you for your attention. And with that, I would like to give back to the studio.